Hey guys, today I want to talk about the Ruby Red Trilogy, which is by Kristen Gear and translated by Anthena Bell. The series was originally published in German and includes Ruby Red, Sapphire Blue, and Emerald Green. This is a YA series about romance and time travel. The main character, 16-year-old Gwyneth Shepard, comes from a rather strange family. She comes from a family who, if they inherit the gene, can travel through time. Not only that, but Gwen can see and talk to ghosts. This apparently has nothing to do with the time travel gene, seeing as Gwen's cousin Charlotte has already been prophesized as the final time traveling member, the 12th to inherit the gene and the ruby. So Charlotte has been trained all of her life in the time travel and things. Each time traveler, either from Gwen's family, the Montruses, or the DeVillers family, are paired up with a gemstone, an animal, and a tree in the very childlike rhyming prophecies. The main prophecy states when the blood from all 12 of the time travelers is read into this machine called a chronograph, which helps with uncontrolled time travel, then something vague but probably awesome will happen. They think it has something to do with curing all sickness. However, it turns out that Gwen's mother lied about the day that Gwen was born because her mother was very not trusting of the Lodge who was in control of the whole time travel -y prophecy business. So Gwen and Charlotte ended up being born on the same day, and of course it is Gwen who ends up with the time traveling gene. Her blood is run into the chronograph and she meets the only other time traveler in her time, the very handsome Gideon de Villers. She is swept up in all kinds of time traveling adventures. She meets the Count who founded the Lodge and found the chronograph and all of the prophecies, and who also happens to be a super creepy mind reader. She and Gideon travel back in time to collect the blood of the time travelers who had read their blood into one chronograph, but unfortunately that one was stolen by Gwen's cousin Lucy and Gideon's relative Paul, because they didn't want the super vague prophecy coming true. Through all of this, Gideon is a total dick. To Gwen because she doesn't know anything about time travel or history. She wasn't trained since she was a child like her cousin Charlotte was, so she's kind of clueless in the whole thing. Of course Gideon treating her like crap just makes Gwen fall more in love with him, and him being the total d-bag that he is kisses her at the most inappropriate times. Now I don't know if this is because it's a translation or because I haven't been 16 in a while, but the whole thing wasn't written the best, personally, I think. There's so many exclamation points, there are so many pop culture references, so many trite ways to describe how beautiful a boy is. It's just so cheesy. All of the events in all three books are jam-packed into about a week, which makes sense since the first book is basically all set up. The second book we start to get things going a little bit. It seems more natural and there's just a nice flow to the story in Sapphire Blue. They time travel more and Gwen starts questioning things more, and also my favorite character who was introduced in the last few pages of Ruby Red becomes more prominent, and he is a demon in the form of a gargoyle who gives the best comic relief. He just kind of follows Gwen around and like makes these little comments and like narrates her life. It's so good. The second book gave me hope that this cheesy series would have an epic ending. It didn't. Just to put it in perspective, Emerald Green was more disappointing than Mockingjay. Emerald Green was more disappointing than how Sherlock really faked his death. Emerald Green was more disappointing than the last Airbender movie. Oh yeah, I went there. Why, you may ask? Because everything that rubbed me the wrong way in the first two books were like multiplied by like 500. Everything that I hoped wouldn't happen 
happened. Gideon's dickish ways were dismissed in the most cliche way ever with just two sentences from him. Honestly, it's so predictable that it's probably not even a, a spoiler for me to complain about it. He acted like a dick to protect her. Of course he did. He acted like a douchebag so she wouldn't sacrifice herself for him and so he wanted her to not fall in love with him, which of course just made her fall in love with him more. Of course she fell in love with him, because she stops breathing when she sees him. You know how horribly everyone mocked the romance in Twilight? You know, like the exaggerated way Bella would stare at Edward in like all of the Twilight parodies? This was that times 10. It felt like a parody. In fact, the whole last half of the book felt like I was reading some weird Twilight parody. The solution and climax of the book was just so silly. It was so silly. I don't want to spoil the absurd plot twist, so let's say Gwen found out she was lactose intolerant. If I was 16 and found out I was lactose intolerant, I would be freaking the freak out. At any age, I would be freaking out about being lactose intolerant. In fact, they were trying to stop someone from being lactose intolerant. So what makes Gwen and Gideon being that okay? The villain is a villain because he wanted to be lactose intolerant. And yet Gwen and Gideon just become lactose intolerant and that's okay. They just totally glossed over it. and. How does Gideon being lactose intolerant help Gwen's lactose intolerance? Who knows? <laughs> I was basically head desking the entire last 50 pages. So let's wrap this up, shall we? I thought Ruby Red and Sapphire Blue were good, light, funny reads that were going to lead up to something awesome, so I gave them three and four stars respectively. But the finale just bombed so hard that I ended up giving it two out of five stars. So uh, I would recommend the first two books, but they don't have a decent conclusion. It's very fluid throughout the three books, as if they could have been just one giant book. So if you want to read for the humor and not necessarily the plot, I'd say give it a go. So that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you read this in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Bye!